got a Bible study here at Rock and Country Church. We're a little late tonight. It's Brent's fault. And uh, anyway, but we, we finally made it on. So uh, God bless you. Glad you're with us tonight. Uh, you join us every Wednesday night at around 6.45. Around Depends on whether Brent's here or not, I guess. <laughs> anyway, and uh, for our chapter by chapter, verse by verse Bible study, we are in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 8, book of Acts, chapter 8. Also, go ahead, if you will, and find the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. We may not get to that tonight, but it's a good read anyway. Isaiah 53. All right, with that, we'll, uh, uh, we're going to do our prayer requests and praise reports. And, oh, I want to tell you about our book again. Our book is a book of names. As a matter of fact, I just put one in here. A book of names from all over the world about of people who uh, either need prayer or are asking us to pray, etc., for them. And uh, we would certainly like to lift you up to the Lord in prayer. If you'll send me a good name, not a good name, if you'll send me a name and a good address, I will send you one of our decals. It says Rocky Country Church is praying for me. And that way, whenever you see this decal, we'll put your name in the book. And we lift this book up to the, to the Lord several times during the week. And uh, you'll know that we are praying for you. And we take this very seriously. We take prayer very, very seriously. And we pray over this book on a constant basis. Uh, so therefore, we'll be praying over you. Um, join us also Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our live stream service here at the church. And then also at 9 a.m. on our YouTube channel for RCC Bible Study TV. Okay? And we've got more stuff to come on that later on. So God bless you. Glad you're with us tonight. We're going to do our prayer request and praise reports. And then we will get ready for our teaching in the book of Acts, the great book of Acts, chapter 8, okay? So uh, we'll get to that in a second. Miss Linda, can we start with you, please? Sure. Uh, myself, I went to, had to go to the eye doctor today, and, he, and they said I had macular degeneration in my right eye. So that's the reason I'm going blind. She does, too. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, my family, Jenna, she's sick. I pray for her and her oh, dog. Oh, sorry to hear that. She's been sick too. Her and her dogs and her friends and her family. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> her list. <laughs> right? List. Amen. Jenna, if you're watching, amen. We pray for you. The first responders, our streets are so rough right in these days. Yeah. And uh, all the military and uh, the Texas government. I've got a whole list of names here. It'd take me forever to do it. Right. But uh, everyone here in the entire church, the world church, church, because this is a time, and we're going to have some rough times in the future. Yep. And uh, I pray for all of them. Amen. And that's it. All right. Well, we definitely want to pray for you and your eyes. We pray that God will correct that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, Sister Edie, glad you're back. Me too. Um, Thomas and I, Carrie and you. Thank you. Kathy, this is probably getting ready for your calf surgery. It'll probably take us three years. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I said that for you and Ter for Terry and you, because it would probably take her ten years for you to get ready. For surgery. So she oh, can take oh. care of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it went right over you. Say, right yeah. over his head, and then I have it right over his head trying to figure out what I said. I uh, Carolyn and William. Amen. She's Sam still in the hospital. Patricia and Timothy. I saw Patricia at Walmart and in Coffin about four weeks ago. Yeah. And I walked right back past the fire after that. And she said, Edie, I said, oh, my God, I'm sorry. So I didn't even recognize her. Terry yeah. sees her every day. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, Holly and Gary and their family. Amen. My son Michael and his, and Tina and their family. My sister Sue and and their family. And our church. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's it. All right. Well, again, glad you're feeling better. And you're, I know you're here Sunday, but I'm glad you're back today. Yeah. Amen. All right, Brother Usual. I usually short sleep. All right. <laughs> Pretty easy, huh? <laughs> All right, Sister Kathy. Myself and my family, my daughter Tracy and her boys, you and Terry, you thanks. for your surgery thanks, and thanks. her for travel mercy. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> Carolyn and William, our pastors and their wives, Amen. our church ministries, 
uh, <coughs> homeless and Trump. And I put Deborah on here because this yesterday she was saying she thought she thought she had a real bad sinus infection, but she texted me. She went to the dentist. Oh no! And I don't. It's not funny. She needs two root canals and three crowns. Oh my oh, wow. gosh! So yeah. Prayers for Deborah. That's why she's not here tonight. She better sell her firstborn for that one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, and of course, praise God for everything because he's died. Amen. Yes, All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there. Mountain time. <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I got to pray for you, and I heard your degeneration in your eyes. I've been there, done that. It's no fun. It's scary. Yes. I pray the good Lord will, will come and intercede and bless you and go your in your sight. I really, I really mean that. Oh, in God. Jesus' name, amen. You're a good person, and you deserve your sight. you got more years to live, and, and I think God will put his hand on you. I really, amen. Really like that. I pray for Terry for what she's going to go through. Oh, thank uh, with you. your surgery, Pat, uh, Pastor Woody, I pray that that goes smooth as well as possibly can be. Amen. Back surgery is not easy to go through. I was, no, it uh, hurts. I was, <laughs> I was blessed years ago by, by a herbalist that saved me from surgery, so I have total, complete empathy for what you're going to go through. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, my buddy Brent down the way, I'm thankful that I found out tonight that I get to go to bingo and he's going to put me to work. I thought I was going to be able to just play bingo, but that ain't going to happen. But that's okay too. It's, it's God's will for that to happen. All my friends here at the church, and I pray for growth of, the, of our church, and I pray for all the men that, and women that I haven't met yet that I think God's going to lead me to, that hopefully hopefully they will, will get involved in God's Word and want to come here. And uh, I just hope and pray for, for the success of all of it. Awesome. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right, Sister Margo. Uh, Terry, for her travel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You, for your surgery. All right, thank you. My church, my family, my brother Michael and Rosie, they both have uh, diabetes pretty bad. And uh, they're not doing good at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Myra, Carolyn and William, Colleen, Trail Life, American Heritage Girl, Chris and, Chris and Lori, Jack's Prayer, and Linda. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sister. All right. Brother Kenneth. My family, our church family, and I need to put my sister, half-sister Kenda in our prayer book. Got a call this afternoon. She's been diagnosed with liver cancer. And uh, two unspoken. All right. Thank you, sir. Sister Becky? Um, <clears throat> oh, can't read my own writing. Uh, Brent and I, uh, everyone here, all the lost and fallen away. Um, RCC, Trail Life, American Heritage Girl, uh, Jack's Prayer for about four or five people I can think of right offhand. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jerusalem, Ukraine, military, our world. Um, Ruth Hussein, Brady Dobbs. Uh, more understanding as I try to study the Bible. Amen. <laughs> and everything's pretty much it's just a praise. It's it's good. I'm learning how not to worry about stuff so much. I still yeah. worry, but I'm starting yeah. letting it go. Yeah, there and you go. I heard something this week that rang home about because you know they always say when you worry, put it in God's lap. But then sometimes we tend to grab it and pull it take back. It back right? and they said some people just give up because they're like, well, I always take it back. Well, they said just keep putting it in His lap. Yeah. Every time you realize you've taken it back, keep putting it back in His lap. And eventually, it'll go away. There you go. <laughs> so, Good deal. It. All right. All right, Brother Brent. Well, first off, I just I just cannot express just how happy I am just to have the honor to sit at this table and be a part of this church. You know, uh, I got a little slap in the face last week myself to remind myself of where I was and where I am and, and uh, keeping that 
that drive, the passion and the drive that I have, you know, sometimes we get complacent and we kind of forget. And I don't ever want to be that way. I always want to have the passion. I always want to bring it when it comes with the Lord. I want to give Him all I have. Amen. So I praise uh, the Holy Spirit to come into me like that. And uh, until you really serve the church, and if you're just coming here a couple hours a week or whatever, but until you serve the church and you're inside the church, you don't see the... Uh, the sacrifice that the pastors and the ministry and the people inside make uh, to make this church go around. You know, I have more uh, respect for Pastor Woody and what he does. I'm, I cannot imagine the amount of text and the phone calls besides just me that he takes on every day. <laughs> you know? Maybe. Uh, well, I, I just figure I'm just one of many, many, many. You know, and I have to remember that. And, uh, you know, he does a lot of stuff. You know, I realize it's not an eight-to-five job. When you're working for God, you're on call at all times. Yeah, Pastor Woody uh, will probably get up at 11 o'clock at night if he's needed and go where he's got to go. You know, I mean, you, you just, you have to answer the call. Mm -hmm. And I have more respect for that and for the people that make this church go. For Edie, the stuff that she does, Amen. and Kathy, and the women in this church. And the fathers, I want to praise the fathers in Trail Life that are stepping up, uh, I was really inspired by the prayer that Mr. Majors closed out last night. I thought that was a great prayer. Uh, I just, I'm so thankful that I actually had three men in there helping teach the lessons. So it's been really good, you know, looking for replacements, as you would say. Right. You know, that's going well. I just got to keep them involved. Uh, and I'm also thankful for the boys and the girls' troop to get to meet at the nursing home this week. Uh, that's a blessing. And, I ask God's blessing on that ministry and that we can serve the community as we're supposed to, as this church should. Uh, now, to, for the prayers of Chris and Lori, as always, I agree with everybody here. For Becky's family, uh, I keep trying to get them to come to this and come to that, but, you know, uh, everybody has a, a reason why they can't make it, but I just keep trying and getting people here with us. Mm -hmm. that need that need the Lord in their lives, you know. A lot of people that don't have the Lord in their lives don't understand why the world is so complicated. And, you know, help us just just a step mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So I, I wish that they could see that. And uh, I pray for Crystal. I pray for Pastor Woody and Terry, your travels. Thank you. Uh, and I pray for the nursing home itself. What an honor that they uh, help support the ministry up there. And I have a lady up there. Uh, I want to add her to the prayer book. Her name is Joey. She's in her 90s and she's on hospice. And I was asked to go in there and pray for her. That she, They told me that might be the last prayer that she hears. So, you know, I felt the call. I did what I was supposed to do. I do want to go by and see her tomorrow because she's on my heart. But I want to add her to the prayer list. You know, her name is Joey. And that's about all I can tell you. Uh, she's just a real sweet lady, and she's near the end and uh, ready to receive God's kingdom. So I pray for that. I also want to pray for the Texas border, that sometimes the government would get out of the way and let Texas do what's best for its state. Uh, I pray for the people there uh, and uh, that they get that worked out. I also pray for the two Navy SEALs and their family, who the Navy SEALs gave the ultimate sacrifice for their country and were lost at sea. So... You know, I want to make sure that we keep their family in our prayers and think about them. And, you know, that's, that's the ultimate sacrifice that you can give for your country. And uh, I hope they were God-fearing men. So, uh, that's pretty much it, Pastor. All right. Good, All right. Deal. Just good deal. Thank you for sure. everything. God's good. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Um, okay, Debbie Franklin says hello. Hey, Debbie. And sorry she's not here. Wish she's you were. She's glad Edie's better. Amen. Hi, KP. I still have your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, she's um, also praying for um, Pastor Woody and Terry and Chris and Lori. Right. And Lori King is on there, but she hasn't said anything. So. Okay. Her, well, usual. Be her usual. Her yeah, usual. Yeah, right, right. Animals. Horses. And her daughter and her daughter's. Uh, employment and all that yeah. training. Okay. Um, my usual, my dad. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> going up there February 8th for another month, so I'll I'll be here for the next two Bible studies. So keep praying for my dad. He's in rehab, and we're, we tried to plan it where I'll be there right when he gets out. So they'll have somebody at the house helping him. 
His biggest complaint in rehab is the breakfast isn't hot, so when I get there, I'll make sure he has a hot breakfast. <laughs> That's his favorite meal. Uh, my sister and her family, they're going through some challenges. Um, my, our kids and our grandkids, our church, everyone here, uh, I agree with uh, all the other prayers um, with Jerusalem, Ukraine, the military, Israel, all the, the whole world, our, our own country and our leaders and <coughs> all the <coughs> political things that are going on with the, with the election and hopefully we'll get that worked out and we'll get the right president. Um, Carolyn and William, Chris, and oh, happy birthday, Carolyn, if you're watching. Yeah, that's happy right. Today's her birthday. birthday. And yeah. um, Chris and Lori and Three Unspoken. Okay. And my husband. He's at the top of the list, but I didn't mean to say him last. I meant the top at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, she read it in reverse. Yeah. So, uh, I read it in reverse. <laughs> that's right. I had to say that a lot. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, I agree with everybody, I, especially um, uh, on my heart, it's especially on my heart, you brought it up with the, mm -hmm. the family of the uh, SEALs that uh, lost their life, uh, you know, as I understood all the uh, news reels and all that stuff, uh, you know, you jump from one boat to another with about 110 pounds of gear, and uh, I'm pretty sure they pretty much sucked to the bottom. And that's what's believed to have happened. And that's really the, the reason they couldn't find them. Yeah. Well, that's really they couldn't find them because you have, you're, you're required to have so much gear. It's just unbelievable. Uh, so anyway, uh, I pray for those families, and then uh, especially uh, the stuff that is going on over there in Iraq and and all in that uh, in Iran and et cetera, et cetera. Because our soldiers are getting fired upon, even though there's not a declaration of war, we're still fighting back, but. Don't think that that's, I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm turning up prophesying anything, but I can almost guarantee that we're fixing to get into another war. We should have finished it instead of pulling out of Afghanistan, mm -hmm. um, but you know who came into office and there you go. So anyway, I just pray that our soldiers are safe, which you know they're, they're taking casualties as, as we speak I'm sure. But. That last strike, though, they hit eight different places. The U.S. is stepping it up a little bit. Right. Well, that was in Yemen. Yeah. I'm talking about over in you know, right. over in Iraq and Iran and all that. They hit Baghdad. They hit they hit the base of Al Assad, which is where we were at. It's a it's a helicopter base in the middle of uh, Iraq, and they 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 hit that base. And so I know there was quite a because that base is a big base, and I'm sure there's quite a few soldiers that were. I didn't hear of any deaths, but I'm sure there was lots of injuries. But I just want to lift up our soldiers because they're uh, they're ordered to do what they have to do, and they'll do it, God just like the SEALs did. So, uh, and then I agree with everybody else and everything, all of our members, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, let's go ahead and pray. Oh, for and Lou Ann's mom. Oh yeah, and Lou Ann's mom, uh, Janet, and Lou Ann and her family. Uh, her mom's name is Janet. I don't know her last name. Sorry. But, Janet uh, Luann's mom. Yeah, Luann. <laughs> and then all of uh, Luann's family, okay, which you're going through all. And Luann has an incredible testimony, by the way. Yeah. All right. Well, let's pray it out, and then we'll get to uh, get all their teaching. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can uh, study your word. And we, I ask, Lord, that you uh, reveal yourself to us in any way you, you deem necessary so that we may understand your word and understand... Uh, how we are to relate to you through your word, Lord, on a day-to-day -day basis. Father, I ask for guidance and peace and correction and, and uh, mainly guidance and through all these things that we're going to have to face in our country, through all the things that we're going to have to face in our lives, and just living the lives that you've called us to live. Let us do it better and better and better each and every day. And the only way we can do that, Lord, is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I ask you to release that power. Help us understand the love that you have for us through your word. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. So, we are in... When we get over into chapter 9, uh, we're going to see Paul's conversion. So, we don't want to get there yet. But now we're going to... We were kind of introduced uh, to who Paul was last week. 
Um, over in verse 758, chapter 7, verse 58, it says, And they cast him out into the city and stoned him, and a witness laid, there, laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. This would be the apostle, the future apostle Paul. And uh, we're going to see his encounter with Christ, like I said, whenever we get into uh, your evening night. You can get opened up. Okay. Okay. I'm getting there. All right. See what I go through? You guys better pray for me before him. <laughs> you ain't ready. I did. All right. I know. Anyway, uh, we're going to see... Uh, we're going to see his conversion over in chapter 9, but we're going to learn a little bit more about his, uh, his uh, predisposition of, of, of uh, his relationship with God and what he thought about this new thing called the way or the, the church or the, uh, uh, this religious organization that says that they believe in Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to learn more about that tonight right off the bat. So, uh, are you ready? I've been ready. Chapter 8, verse 1. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. All right. Now, what uh, we have to realize is, is back up here in 58, they kind of introduced Paul. And they're still talking about Paul down here in verse 1. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul who would become Paul. So they're talking about Saul consented to whose death? Stephen. Stephen's mm -hmm. death. Right. Okay. So he consented to the stoning of Stephen. Now what that tells us is, is that Stephen was a, a, a person of uh, this new movement, if you will, of Christianity. And so... Paul says, yeah, that dude's got to die, you know, let's stone him, you know, because, you know, I'll explain why in just a second, uh, uh, but anyway, he consented or, or he approved of Stephen stoning in his, his killing. Uh, now, we remember back up in uh, verse 56, it says, look, I, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing in the right hand of God. In other words... Stephen looked up and saw his future eternal uh, life with Christ. And that gave Stephen comfort to know that he was about to die and about to go with Christ. It's kind of like the way whenever I was talking with uh, Janet today, uh, I feel as though by the end of our conversation, if you will, is that she knew that she was going to pass away. She's very sick with a bunch of different cancers. And uh, she knew that she was going to pass at some time. And I feel as though, and I hope and pray, that she was secure in her foundation, uh, in her salvation, knowing that when she does take her last breath, that she will immediately go to heaven, immediately be in the presence of the Lord. This is exactly what Stephen went through. And immediately, he knew he was about to die. And he knew as soon as he did die, took his last breath, he would go to, to be with the Lord because he saw the Lord ready for him, welcoming him. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that today. A lot of times when people are passing away, they, you don't, nobody knows that for sure because people don't die and literally come back. Okay? But a lot of people believe, a lot of smart people believe, that some people, not all people, um, hear Christ calling them, they see Christ, they see heaven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right before they go. Because you'll see people who, who will reach up and it's like, here I am, Lord, take me to be with you, you know, that, that kind of thing. And uh, that's basically what Stephen did. He basically looked up and says, okay, I see you, I, I'm ready, I'm coming to you, all right? Uh, but, but Saul was totally against this belief, even though he witnessed that. He, he would take it like, well, you know, that's just a bunch of hogwash. We don't believe in that stuff. That's not what God said. And I'm going to explain that here in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, when it says that all Jerusalem, uh, there was great persecution arose against the church. Well, this is the start of the persecution. This is where uh, they started, you know, killing the Christians, if you will. 
and uh, uh, they scattered. They just took off and went, you know, as far away from the apostles as they could, or far away from the center of, of the Christianity. But the apostles stayed. Why would the apostles stay? If, if you knew that somebody was after you and they were looking to kill you, why would you stick around? Why, why do you think the apostles stayed? Because Jesus told them to remain in the city. Yeah, maybe so. Anybody else? He felt it was work still to be done. There you go. That's what it was. Okay? They knew what their calling was. Just like Stephen. He says, you know, I'm not going to give up my calling just because you're going to kill me. I know what my calling is. And that's exactly what the apostles thought. The apostles thought, well, you know, this is where God put me, so this is where I'm going to be. Remember whenever Jesus uh, told Peter, he says, get behind me, Satan. You do not. You have the mind of what men want, not what the mind of God wants. See, and so the apostles are following that same kind of idea, if you will. You know, this is not our plan. This is not man's plan. This is God's plan. And we're going to stick to God's plan. And see, that's, that's what we need to do. It's commitment. We need to stand. Yeah. We need to stick to God's plan. Irregardless of what comes against us, we need to stick to God's plan. And that's what the apostles did. <clears throat> All right, verse 2. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. All right, now <laughs> lamentation just means mourning, uh, you know, uh, weeping, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, they were sorry that, that Stephen was stoned to death. And when it's devout men, it's people who, who believed in Christ and believed in the resurrection all the things that Jesus said all the things that the apostles taught these were were most likely disciples of the apostles that gathered up Stephen and took him just like uh, you remember the Joseph of Arimathea and uh, and uh, Nicodemus who, who asked Pilate for Christ's body okay these were prominent men in the Jewish faith but they believed in Christ, and so they asked for Christ's body, took him away, and, and buried him. We'll see some of that stuff, what happened in, with uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, and what happened to the body of Christ. We'll see it over in Isaiah 53, if we get there. Okay? Not yeah. Too yeah, long. yeah. But, you know, Jesus and Stephen, you know, they're both accused of breaking the Mosaic law, the law of Moses. But they couldn't name exactly what law because the, the Old Testament prophesied of a Messiah mm -hmm. that they had been waiting years and hundreds and hundreds of years for. and But they kept saying, you're going against the Mosaic laws and all that. But they really couldn't nail what law did they actually break because well, Jesus stayed within the laws. He was right. He, he, he kept all the laws. Yeah. Okay, the, pro the reason that they killed Christ was because... Christ says, I and the Father are one. So he was blaspheming him, what they thought because God told him there is no other God. There is one God and there is no other. And I am he. You remember whatever he told Moses? He says, go and tell uh, uh, Pharaoh. And Moses says, well, who do I say sent me? And you say, I am sent you. Right. Okay? Uh -huh. And so there's only one I am. And so when Jesus came along, Jesus is saying, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I do my Father's will because my Father has sent me. My Father has sent me. So he says, um, another verse, he says, uh, I could not do the things that I do. Even Nicodemus said this, unless I had come from heaven and my Father direct. So he's saying that he and the Father are one. You see what so I'm saying? So on the point that he said, I am the Son of Man or I am the Son of God, it was the point he said, I too am God. And that was the straw. Right. And he's not, he's not saying that he, he only three times did he say I was the son of God. Okay. Because he didn't use that. He used it as, he always said, I am the son of man. And the reason he did that is so that he could show his humanity to human beings. Okay. He, he already said, he, you know, he didn't want to use I am the son of God. Because if he used that, they're already saying, you can't be God. Okay. You can't be the son of God. All right, because that would make you God. And so that's why they murdered him, really. Because he put himself with God. equal to God. No? Equal to God. All right? now, Stephen, now Stephen, the reason that they murdered him was not because he broke laws, 
but because he convicted them the same as Jesus did. Remember what we read over and over? Woe to you, you uh, doers, of you Pharisees and scribes. Remember when we read that last, I think it was last week. Yeah. Okay. He convicted them of all their wrongdoings. And so they didn't like that. Well, Stephen did the exact same thing. He gave them the full history of Israel. You know? And he said, y'all did it. Y'all killed, killed him. their own law. Y'all killed him. And so that's the reason that they killed him because he is accusing them the same way Christ accused them. Okay? Not that they broke laws. Okay. Just that they, just, they didn't like being accused. Okay? And they couldn't come back and say that. When they could not because they did do it. Okay? Um, verse uh, 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. All right. Now, we'll know and we'll see later on that he did far more than just that. We'll see that he even got letters of condemnation on certain people from the, uh, uh, from, I, I think, the, uh, the Pharisees and all that. And he and the, the uh, temple, if you will, and he took and Sadducees, and he took those letters. It would be like having a uh, an arrest warrant. Okay, he was given the authority as an arrest warrant to go and have Terry arrested, to have Linda arrested, have Edie arrested. Thomas, <laughs> Thomas, they would they would kill him for sure. <laughs> but no, 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 no. But but the thing is, is that uh, he. He was persecuting the church, and this is what it's going to boil down to. He was trying to get rid of the way, this Christian movement. Now, why was he trying to get rid of the Christian movement or the way, or why was he trying to, to stop this belief in Jesus? So he could move up the ladder. You know, so they would take care of it. They wanted to keep all the money they had and all everything that they gave. He wouldn't no, have that's not it. No, so, no. Hmm. So, so why why would Saul why would Saul persecute the church or the way or this new movement, if you will, of Christianity? Remember who Paul is, okay? He was a Jew. Okay, well he's a Jew of you. He was a Roman citizen. He was uh, a Pharisee of Pharisees. So in other words, he he grew up. Remember uh, Gamaliel. Who raised him up? He was his teacher. We talked about that. Okay, uh, he was a devout believer in the law of Moses, in the Mosaic law, in the way God had said Jews should be. So, and remember, Jews still don't believe in Christ. They still don't. Okay. Now, what he was trying to do, if you can understand this, and I pray you do, he was. He thought he was working for God. He did. He thought that he was doing God a favor by helping God get rid of all these people. Remember what God did? We read this over in Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 11, where all the Amorites and the Stalactites and the Malachites and Dynamites and all them got wiped out by God. Okay, well, this is exactly what Saul thought he was doing. He thought he was getting rid of these riffraff that were trying to come in here and take people away from believing God. His intentions were more true than the Pharisees. Pharisees did it because of jealousy. He right. No, he did it because he thought he was working for God. <laughs> yeah. He thought that he was doing God a favor by eliminating this new movement of not of non-believers in God. Yeah. Although they do believe in God, okay? But it wasn't what was done throughout the ages. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the, uh, not just heritage, but uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but it wasn't their way of doing it uh, for so, so many hundreds and thousands of years, okay? I mean, God came and He spoke to Abraham, spoke to Moses, spoke to Elijah, spoke to all these different prophets and all this stuff. And so all these teachings of the Old Testament came into uh, Saul being taught by Gamaliel, who was a Pharisee. Remember, he was like a, uh, the higher or the highest um, uh, teacher he was a master of, of the law. He was a master of a master of Pharisee. All right, That's how I used it last time. And so he taught Saul all this stuff. So Saul was as we should be to our faith. 
I mean, he was sold out for his faith. There was nothing in the world that's going to change him. And this new movement of Christianity is, is, is hurting the relationship between man and God, or the Jews and God. And so he's going to put an end to it. And he's going to stop it. So he thought he was doing God's work. He really did. Well, now, at least he had a pure intention, like, it, unlike the rest. If you think about it, the Arab nations, what did they do? You know, Allah, they pray to Allah and all that kind of stuff. And they kill people on behalf of Allah, right? Matter of fact, in the Quran, somewhere in the Quran, and I do not know the Quran, but somewhere in the Quran it states they are to kill the infidels. Mm -hmm. Now what does that mean? That means that they are to eliminate anyone who does not believe in worshiping Allah. Okay, so they're doing the same thing, but not for God. They're doing it for some dude that's rotting in, rotting in the dust. All right? So Saul was sold out for God. He was not going to allow anything to hurt man's relation or the Jews' relationship and God, uh, with God and God with them. He was going to put a stop to this. So he was doing what he really believed. Oh, he 100%. 100% believed it. Yeah. 100%. Okay. And matter of fact, there was nothing that would sway him. Yeah. I wonder if that's why God chose Saul because he saw the dedication saying, look, if I can... We'll, we'll see it. A, a apostle out of him. Look at the dedication I'm going to get from this guy. Well, we'll see it. Yeah. We'll see okay. it. Wait till we get exactly. there. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll see it. So, now that's just three short verses, but that explains the purpose of Saul. All right? Because we were introduced last week to Saul, and this explains the purpose of Saul. His, his ambition was to stop Christianity. Stop it. Not just put a damper on it, but to eliminate it. Okay? okay. All right, verse 4. Actually, uh, 4 and... Let's see, wait a minute. Let's see, da, da, da. Just 4 by itself. And then 5 and 6 and 7. Just 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Okay. <clears throat> the apostles' members stayed. Right? The apostles stayed. But the other people, which were disciples and such, they took off and went to other places. And when they did, what did they do? They started evangelizing. And this is going to be, this is going to come into play. Actually, you're going to read five by itself. This, this is going to come into play because, uh, we'll read five first, please. Huh? Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Now, if you look at it, uh, Samaria is actually, a uh, Samaria. Samaria is actually north of Judea, which is where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem and all is in Judea. It's north of it. But whenever the Bible speaks of going up to Jerusalem or down to Samaria or whatever, it's strictly talking about latitude. Okay? Because Jerusalem was up on a high mountain, remember? <coughs> so, when Philip goes down to Samaria, he's actually going north into Samaria. Remember in uh, John chapter 4 where Jesus came into Samaria and, uh, and preached to the woman at the well? And no other Jew would ever come into Samaria and talk to Samaritans? All right, this is going to kind of come, in, come into play later on. Uh, Philip, who was a Jew, went up to Samaria uh, and he, was, he is the first evangelist in Scripture, mentioned in Scripture. He is the first one to go out and evangelize that is mentioned by name. If you read up in verse 4 here, it says, and, and they went out everywhere preaching the word. That's evangelizing, all right? But the first one named in Scripture is Philip. And we're going to learn more about him and we're going to see some more of his actions here in a little bit. He was the only apostle, I guess, that didn't stay in Jerusalem. Right? He wasn't an apostle. Okay. Okay. He, he was a disciple, all right? Uh, so he went uh, he went up north and, and preaching the word but he is the first one who uh, and it's the first missionary journey on the for the new way for Christianity first missionary journey first evangelist and the first one named okay uh, six and seven please and the multitudes 
with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed, and lame were healed. Oh, I'm sorry, an eight, too. And there was great joy in that city. So he went up to Samaria as the first evangelist, as the first uh, missionary trip, if you will, of anyone. And he was very, very, very successful. Which these scriptures simply tell us here is, is that if you're doing, which I've told you this many times, if you're doing God's work, you will succeed. If you're truly doing God's work, you will succeed. Philip never went up there saying, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay? He went up there saying, you know, this is, this is how God works. This is how God will work in your life. And it's all about Jesus Christ. Okay? Because he's preaching the gospel. He's not preaching God, God, God. He's preaching the gospel of Christ. He has death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, uh, and, and that he lives today. That's, why, that's what he's preaching. And many of the people were healed, and many of the people were uh, uh, filled with joy, and all because of the great miracles that he did. Now, the reason that that is important is because we're going to see somebody else who saw some of these miracles, and it didn't work out too good for him. Okay. So, Pastor. Yeah. Sorry to keep saying this. It's all right. Philip had the powers that the apostles had, even though he was a disciple. Well, as he said, not everybody got the healing power. I thought power all the, the disciples right. were apostles. No. 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 Uh -huh. no. Whenever he left there, he was he was considered as a disciple. But whenever he got and he started evangelizing for Christ, the Holy Spirit evidently came upon him at some point in time. It doesn't tell us that, but because of what we're fixing to see and what we saw there, he certainly came, became an apostle, or an apostle, I won't say an, actually an apostle, but he received the Holy Spirit superpowers, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And so therefore, I guess you would say he would have to be an apostle because um, <sighs> apostles were just his followers, right? No, the so, disciples, okay, an apostle is someone who is appointed by Christ. It's, uh, that was the original 12. Yeah. It's over in, uh, well, I don't want to go there, well, but Philip it's over is, in, it's over in chapter 1. Original 12. I thought he was too, but Pastor, what do you think? Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm mistaken. I'm mistaken. Okay. okay. Evidently, he was named as one of them. All right. It's just a good, I can't remember. I didn't remember. All right. So, all right. So, he was an apostle then. We settled that. Yay. I was wrong. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm not okay. what I was trying to do. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> So, and so he did possess the, uh, because of his apostleship, he would possess the uh, uh, powers and the, mer uh, the signs and wonders and miracles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, and of course he evangelized and um, uh, on that missionary, first missionary journey and did the healing, had the healings and such, and people believed him. All right? All right. So, verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. Okay. Now this guy here, he was a... Uh, you know he's possessed by Satan because Satan also has power. All right? And this guy was a, had a mixture of uh, science, a mixture of superstition, a mixture of astrology and a mixture of the occult. He had all these different forms of, of knowledge, I'm not going to say wisdom, forms of knowledge that he basically compiled and evidently of course he uh, uh, he had Satan backing him up because he was able to trick people, deceive people, which is what Satan does. He either deceives us and uh, entices us uh, uh, what is the other word? Um, Tempts us and uh, gets us to take the bait. <laughs> yeah, gets us to take the bait. Yeah. Um, no, there's another. Convicts us. Convicts us. Okay. And so this guy had a, had a lot of that that uh, ability to influence people to show himself as an awesome person. And so people thought this is Simon. This He's actually called Simon Magnus the Magician. 
different than Simon of the Apostles. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, Simon, you're thinking of Simon Peter, okay? And that was Simon Drillman. Uh, Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter, okay? But this is Simon Magnus, the magician, and that's what he did. You know, magic, there is no such thing as magic. Y'all know that. It's all trickery, right? All right, and this is exactly what he did. That's why he's known as a magician. He, he just tricked people, all right? Whether it's a sleight of hand or whatever it is, he just fools people, which is exactly what Satan does. Yeah. All right? All right. Uh, but everybody, because of his great ability, if you will, everybody thought that he was something special and he was, you know, like a magician or, or supernatural or something like that, which he was not. All right, verse 10. Um, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Yeah, see, he fooled them into thinking that he had the same power as, as Philip did because this is still up in the area where Philip was. Philip was performing all these different signs, wonders, and miracles. And then also uh, uh, the Simon, he came along and he was doing the same thing. So they kind of put two and two together and said, well, if Philip is a man of God, this guy must be a man of God. Yeah. Okay? Tried to be like the Antichrist or something. Right, <laughs> right. Okay, uh, 11 and 12. No, just 11. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. So he'd been up there for a long, long time doing these things. So Christ had certainly not picked him out up in Samaria. All right, so he couldn't be an apostle. So he, what did Jesus say? You're either of him or you're of Satan, right? So if he wasn't of Christ, then get, he had to be of Satan. All right? All right, now 12 and 13 go together. But when they believed Philip as he preached things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Okay. Simon himself also believed. The only thing is, is that he didn't believe in Christ. What he believed in was himself and the signs and wonders and miracles. And the same, because he could do the same thing Philip was doing, right? But he didn't believe in Christ, and this is very important. These people that were baptized, they were baptized in water, not the Holy Spirit. We're going to see in a minute that uh, Peter and and uh, was it Peter and John? I think come up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they come up there and they bring the the Holy Spirit. But this guy here, of course, has the spirit of Satan, and he's doing the same thing. That, the, that Philip was doing, but Philip was doing them evidently somewhat even greater signs because the people started believing Philip over Simon. And he didn't like that. We're going to see why in just a little bit. He didn't like the fact that he was losing his uh, notoriety. Yeah, he didn't like it at all. Kind of sounds like the Pharisees in Christ, right? Well, his yeah, power was exactly. to compete with Philip. I'm sure he couldn't make the lane. <clears throat> exactly. And, exactly. And Philip did. All right. It told us that up in verse uh, six, uh, uh, seven. All right. Um, but they baptized in the water, not the Holy Spirit, um, because the Holy when you when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is a change that is when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is a change that is made in you. These people were not changed from the inside. They were just changed on the outside. They weren't changed in their spirit. They were just changed in their thinking. Okay? They were just changed in their thinking. Uh, so Simon himself believed, and when he was baptized in water, not in the spirit, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing miracles and signs which were done. So he saw Philip doing even more than what he was doing. Okay? All right, we're good with that? Yes, sir. All right, 14. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. Oh, come on. All right. Um... I'm sorry. Can I read 14 and 15. All right, can you read that one more time, please? 
Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. Peter and John knew, because remember this is Peter and John that walked with Christ and were closest friends with Christ. They were Peter, James, and John, right? And Peter and John went down. And the reason James didn't go down is because James ended up becoming the leader of all the churches in Jerusalem. Uh, he was head of all the churches in Jerusalem, so he didn't go out evangelizing anywhere or whatever. He was, I don't want to say like the Pope, but he was like the head honcho in Jerusalem for Christians. Right? But Peter and John, they took off and went down in latitude all right, and uh, to see if the Holy Spirit had been released upon these people. Because remember, Jesus told the apostles, he says, uh, I believe it's chapter, it is chapter 1, it's right at the beginning of Acts. It says that wait until, uh, you're to go to Jerusalem and wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. Remember that? It said that over in John. And he says, wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. And then they received the Holy Spirit because Jesus breathed on them. And of course, we certainly have the day of Pentecost where everybody received the Holy Spirit. All right? So the, the Holy Spirit now was a different baptism than the water baptism. The water baptism was, a, was John's, the Baptist baptism, which is the cleansing of, of your outside, if you will, <coughs> or a uh, representation of cleansing of the outside uh, for the repentance of your sin. But the Holy Spirit is the one that comes in and cleanses you on the inside and changes you into that new creation that Paul talks about over in the book of Romans. <clears throat> so is that kind of like what you said in 13, that they were baptized only with water? Right. And in 14, that's when they talk about the Holy Spirit. Well, that's, that's Peter, because Peter and John were directed by, in a sense, by the other apostles, or by James, if you will, since he was kind of head of the church, or by Christ, or by the Holy Spirit itself, yeah. to go down and do the baptism of Christ instead of the baptism of John the Baptist. Because all the people knew were the baptism of John the Baptist, which was in water. Right. right? Until Jesus came on and, and brought the Holy Spirit into them. Well, Peter and John, because well, they're kind of the big guys now, they wanted to go down and make sure that the Holy Spirit was entered into these people instead of just John okay. the Baptist baptism. That makes 13 make sense now, what you said. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> all right. Uh, 16. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. Okay? <laughs> but they hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. They had only been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. All right? Uh, 17. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And there you go. Peter and John laid hands on them, prayed for them again, just like, just like we do whenever we pray for people. Uh, this is, it's over in also, I think it's James 4, or 3 or 4, where it tells us to lay hands on the sick, etc., etc. And so that's what we do, okay? As baptized believers, and, and by the way, you as a baptized believer in the Holy Spirit, can lay hands on people too. I know it says that the uh, the elders of the church, but, but what it is meaning is an elder of the church is not an old person of the church. Okay? Okay? Yeah, we are. <laughs> no, not you just can't win. Okay. This is what I keep trying to tell, what I keep telling you. You're an elder in the church because you're old. But you're not an elder of the church, okay? To be an elder of the church, Timothy was an elder of the church, and he was only 27 years old, roughly, okay? The elder of the church is a person who is, a, who is far along in their walk, okay? Now, as far as an elder of, or as a leadership role in the church, that's over in Second Timothy, First and Second Timothy. Uh, it's a calling of deacons and such and such, and we won't get into that, but... Uh, like myself, I'm automatically an elder of the church. Uh, Chris is automatically an elder of the church. 
And if somebody else takes the position, I hope they will, they will be an elder of the church. Okay? So, it's, it's the leadership of the church is what it is. And it's now, based upon your walk with God, not how many years you've gone exactly, to that church. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's, it's, exactly. Okay. it's based on like we had a we had a guy here at one time that the that people wanted him to be an elder of the church. And Jack actually told me, he says he came to me and says, Uh uh, that guy should not be. Okay, and that Jack was an elder of the church. And of course I agreed with him and I won't mention anything about it. But the problem was is that that particular person was not a he was not a, desired by the church to be an elder because he was a uh, was far in his walk mm -hmm. it was because he was a, he was a great guy yeah it was like popularity yeah. okay and that's not you it can't be an elder like of a church matter of fact you become somewhat unpopular if you're an elder of the church okay and so anyway this person cannot do it and, and okay. they got mad well, that's no it's, it's your yeah. walk with god and how far it is taking how, how, how far you are how far you are all right <laughs> All right. So, whatever it says, what I meant, what I tried to get to a while ago is that laying on of hands. The laying on of hands. I know another scripture says, "Don't take it lightly," and you shouldn't take it lightly. But what you should think of, and what you should always remember, is is that your laying on of your hands is just simply you coming in agreement with what God's desire is. Is that He took all of our sins. He took all of our iniquities. He took all of our sicknesses, our illnesses, all that upon himself. And we're just laying our hands on that person in agreement with God that this we want this person healed. Okay? There's nothing magical about it. We don't do anything. We just do it out of obedience because it, Scripture says, lay, we just saw it, lay hands on them and they shall, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon them. And that's what we want to do. We want the Holy Spirit, because God does the healing, not us. We want the Holy Spirit to come upon them and heal them. And the Holy Spirit can. But that's up to God. Yes. You're just a vessel. We're just, just a, a vessel. pot of clay. That's it. That's all we are. And pot of clay. And when you do that, it brings them into more faith. Hopefully it does. Uh -huh. Hopefully it, it does. Yeah. Life, so. Hopefully it does. Uh, or at least it gives them more hope, <laughs> if nothing else, you know. And again, and that's why I try to stress all the time from up front, it's nothing that we do except do as we are commanded. And, and that's why we do it. That's why we anoint with the oil. Same thing. I mean, the oil has been prayed over. It has been prayed over. It's been blessed, etc. But it's just oil. And, uh, but the, it, the scripture says anoint with oil. And so we anoint with oil. We lay hands on the sick and hope God heals them. But it's all up to him, not us. All right. Um, eight, 18. And when, and when Simon saw that through the laying of, on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Okay. This guy saw real healing. Okay. Now, remember what Simon the magician had been doing before. He saw, he tricked him. Okay, uh, he, he fooled them, he uh, tempted them, he did whatever, whatever, whatever. But nothing, nothing really miraculously happened like it did with, with uh, Philip up here where it says, and in verse 7 it says, Unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Well, Simon the magician didn't do any of that kind of stuff, okay? He may, have, he may have given people hope by doing his works or whatever and making them feel better about themselves, but it was all false. It was not real. So whenever he saw Peter and John come up there and actually, again, probably heal people who were, who were dying, uh, heal people who had disease, leprosy, like Christ did, etc., because the apostles had these powers, um, he says, man, that's what I want. You know, I've been fooling them and getting away with it, but now this is the real stuff. So I want some of that. And, and so he goes to Peter and John and he says, you know, how can I get some of this stuff? How much you need? You know, what, what's it going to take? Everything's got a price, right? Yeah. Everything's got a price. Yeah. And uh, we, of course, find out that Peter and John uh, kind of rebuke him, if you will. 
All right. Um, what are we at? 20 or 19? 19. 19. 19. Can I read 18? Because it's sure. not one sentence. Yeah. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, you really think he wanted them to receive the Holy Spirit? No. Was that his motivation? He able to do it. Yeah, was that... Was that everybody, I can do it. Yeah, was he was that, making it about him. Was that his attempt? Yeah. Exactly. All about him. Exactly. And why is that? Because he made a lot of money doing it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he told us earlier. So if he had the real stuff, do you think how much more money he could make? That's exactly what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. All right? He's as bad as Judas. He's as bad as Judas. Well, I don't know he's as bad as Judas, uh, but anyway. My comments say he has the mindset that Judas had. Yeah, yeah. Well, he does. But I don't know that he was as bad as Judas because... I mean, well, Judas walked with, with Christ for three years. Yeah. I mean, this guy didn't walk with Christ. No. He walked with Christ for three years. He ate with him. He learned from him. <laughs> on, 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 on. And then, uh, and, and Jesus even told him, he says, the one that, you know, puts the bread in the bowl. Uh, and then uh, Judas at one time in one of the Gospels, I don't remember which, it says, uh, uh, is it I, Lord, or something like that? And Jesus says, as you say, it is. So, I mean, he poured black dog and said, yeah, yeah, it's you. Mm -hmm. you know? Imagine the look on the other apostle's face. Well, they didn't get it, though, because it, it actually <laughs> tells us. It was just between him and Jesus. It didn't, it, yeah, we don't know if he whispered it or if he, you know, oh, okay. we don't know. But, but the other guys didn't, didn't sense it because it gives no indication of that. Okay? okay. All right, uh, so 20. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. So if you think about that, if you're doing anything for yourself, take out the money, if you will, and just put yourself there. If you're doing this for you, Peter would be telling you the same thing. I will let you just perish with you. Because you know what? And this is what I keep trying to instill. It's not about us. It, I mean, there is none of it that is about what we do or, uh, or us. All that we are called to do is to be obedient. Is to be obedient. Now you say, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to be obedient to. Well, then you must be a new Christian. because. Uh, but we can certainly teach you that, right? Through the teachings. <clears throat> but what this guy is, is, is trying to do He's trying to say, hey, you know, I'll even pay you guys if I can get this kind of recognition and glory from people. Well, you know, your TV evangelists, not all of them, but some of your TV evangelists, they're doing the exact same thing. Day in, day out, right now, today. You know, it's all about sending in your money to me, and, you know, I'll send you this, or I'll do this, or, or whatever, and, uh, you know, God will bless you. He'll give you 30, 60, 90, 100 fold, on and on and on and on, if you send me money, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just not, it's not it. Okay, it's just a, watch about five minutes and you know to turn Oh on. yeah, you know to turn on. Like, I want to be as famous as Billy Graham, then yeah. you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and if you remember the, the, the sin that causes all sin is disobedience. Oh yeah. It's disobedience. It's not doing what God called you to do. What happened in the garden? Adam and Eve were told, or Adam was told by God, do not partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not, or you will die. So he had to tell Eve. Now remember, Eve wasn't there whenever God told Adam that. And then Adam, Eve was created. And certainly, he, he, who else would he talk to? There was nobody else there, okay? Yeah. So certainly he told Eve, uh, because even he professed to Satan, well, no, God did not say that. God said that we could eat of every tree of the garden except for this one. So it already tells us that Adam had told Eve not to partake of that fruit, right? And then so what did they do? They both partook, so they both disobeyed. It was just like dying. It's like dying. Just like Dan, because he just messed everything up. He did. He did. He did. He did. Well, Dr. So, Jeremiah says people sin because it gives them pleasure 
Well, it does. He said, if yeah. sin hurt, yeah. we wouldn't do sin because it don't hurt. That's he said, right. sin is purely a pleasure thing. I did. I said that Sunday in different words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I said was, is that uh, when I asked, do you love God? Do you love God perfectly? No. Do you love God as much as you should? Do you love God? Or do you love God? Now, the point behind it was, is that the reason that we sin is because at the moment that we're enticed by sin, we actually love that sin more than we love God. Okay? And so that's why we fall. Yeah, that's, why with your sin. that's why we fall. Well, that's why Satan yeah. lets it look so good. Exactly. And you think, well, exactly. I can repent later on down. I'm young now. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't worry again, it goes back to one thing. The, the, the sin of all sins is disobedience. And everything else comes from there. That's why Paul tells us that Jesus was, I think it's in chapter, uh, I don't know what chapter it's in. It's in the book of Romans. He says he was obedient all the, obedient all the way to death on the cross. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> all right. Uh, where are we at, honey? 21. All right. 20, let's see. Actually, 21, 22, and 23. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Okay. He's basically saying, telling this guy, he said, look, you, th you got it all wrong, man. It ain't about you. It ain't about getting rich. It ain't about prosper prosperity, <coughs> it's about being obedient to God. That's what it's about. He says, uh, and you're, you've been poisoned by the bitterness and bound by iniquity. The bitterness of, of the desire of money. Remember over in, in uh, is it First or Second Timothy, where it says in the, uh, the root of all evil is the love of money. Is the love of money, not money. Right. It's mm -hmm. the love of money. And people will sell their souls, sell their bodies, sell their kids, sell their mom, you know, for money. I mean, people will do that. Yeah. And this is what he's talking about. He says you are bound up by the, by the love of something other than God. This is why God tells us, you know, the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other God before me, which includes money. But a lot of people do a lot of bad things for money, right? Yeah, in the NIV, their own kids. they do. In the NIV, he even calls him of the devil. You're of the devil, right? Well, he is. <laughs> he is, and that's what it says. Uh, whenever we were talking earlier, you know, you're either of God or you're or you're not, and he certainly wasn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, Twenty-four. Then Simon answered and said, "Pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me." Okay. He asked them. He says, "No, wait a minute." Well, if, now you kind of have to put yourself in this guy's shoes. He really in his heart of hearts, okay? He, yeah, he was dunked in the water. How many times have we dunked somebody in the water and they come back, well, I think I need to get baptized again, okay? <laughs> or how many times have I heard people come up and say, well, yeah, I got baptized in five churches already. Well, you're not baptized in the Spirit, okay? You have to be baptized in the Spirit, and that's only one time. You don't ever have to be baptized again in the Spirit. You can be dunked a thousand times, and all that is is, a, is you trying to say, well, if I do this, maybe I'll be better. Okay? But that water don't make you better. Okay? It's only the Holy Spirit that will make you better. All right? You can be dunked a thousand times in water, but that's not going to make you better. Only the Holy Spirit, being obedient to God, is going to make you better. I couldn't understand that. A lot of people, even here, they want to be dumped into water again. Yeah, well, it's okay. There comes a time in people's lives to where they want to be rededicated, but they just don't understand the difference between rededication and baptism. Okay? okay. Because the church, if you will, has taught you got to be baptized in the water. You got to be dumped in the water. Okay? And that that's a fallacy. That's not true. Okay, remember when we read in chapter 2 of the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. there was not ever mentioned dunking in water up there. There was, nothing was mentioned about water. Okay, and all those people were overcome by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's, that's the baptism, that's the true baptism. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself says, 
you were you were uh, baptized in John's baptism. Remember that? Mm -hmm. and we're in the book of John, but he's talking about John the Baptist. He says you were baptized in John's baptism, which is the baptism of repentance of sins. But he says wait until you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And of course, that's what happened in, on the day of Pentecost. Okay. I remember when Pastor Woody, before he baptized me, the night that I held hands with you two and we prayed together, he told me that's when the Holy Spirit, you know, the water a couple weeks is later on, he said, but tonight you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, he right. told me. It's, right. it's happening now. And, you know, I had tears in my eyes and exactly. hold it down. I'll never forget that. The day I, I gave my heart to the Lord, you know, and... Uh, I remember him telling me, this is your, your spiritual baptism. That's your right. spirit has already gotten rent. Right. I mean, that's what well, he said. It's already united with Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, now in a couple of weeks, we will do the official so that you can, you know, proclaim that you right. have given yourself to God. Yeah. Right. But he said, but right now, right. this was it. And that's that's what it is. If you, again, if you go back over to the day of Pentecost in chapter 2, there's no mention of anybody being dunked in water there. Nope. At all. Okay. Kind of but yet like they were all covered with the Holy Spirit. What now? So that's kind of like a show. I mean, really, it's for well, people. It, it's for people okay. It, it's a show not to entertain. Yep. It's a show to witness. Okay. All right. And the show to witness is, is that you are showing everybody else, if you will, and they are bearing witness to what you are proclaiming. You are proclaiming that you have already received Christ as Lord and Savior. You truly meant it in your heart. And now you're being baptized because Jesus commands us to do two things in remembrance of Him. It's the Lord's Supper and the water baptism. Okay, And so therefore we do the water baptism to show other people that we have already accepted the Lord as our Savior. And we're simply doing this because Jesus commands us to do the water baptism. Okay, okay? And you can be held accountable. And, <laughs> and you do that as, as a, uh, so that everybody can witness it. And then you're exactly right, so that whenever you know you start going off the deep end, let's say somebody can come up to you and say, uh, "Did you not get baptized? <laughs> then why are you doing what you're doing?" Yeah. See what I'm saying? Iron sharpens iron. That's right. Because whenever we are baptized, we do that as a witness for other people to see that what we're proclaiming, we are believing and, and truthfully proclaiming. This is this is why at the end of each service, if you will, I, I try, and, and I know it sounds kind of repetitious, and probably most people don't even hear it anymore, but I try to say, and you have to mean it in your heart, because you can say, oh yeah, well, I believe in Jesus, but if you don't believe it, truly believe it in your heart, it's of no avail. It's just like mumbling words, and, and God, in a sense, doesn't hear it. I mean, He hears it, but if you really think about it, would you want God to hear your lie? Would you want to just write out lie to God? Okay, well, you know, I don't really believe it, but I'm going to say it so everybody else can hear it. Okay? So that I can be baptized. I can be dunked in the water. The well, water don't do anything. But do you really want to lie face to face to God? Because you're supposed to be in that, in that uh, position right there, speaking directly to God when you call on Jesus to be Lord. I mean, you're not calling on Woody to be Lord. You're not calling on Kenneth to be Lord. You're calling on God to be your Lord. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually talking to God. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just, are you thinking you're going to fool God? Okay. So, so. Or is your baptism about you? So what we have to, what <laughs> we have what to. That's what I was, that's what I was. So what we have to do is we have to realize, do we really mean it? Or are we saying it to impress people? Are we saying it to get ourselves out of a crack? Are we saying saying it to we feel better about ourselves? Are we saying it because we mean it? And if you don't mean it, you probably ought not to say it because if you do, you're lying to God if you don't truly mean it. And that's why I try to emphasize that you must mean it in your heart. It's not something just to say because it's a part of the sinner's prayer. It's something that is very important because if you don't mean it in your heart and you're saying it, you're calling on Jesus this would be kind of like it. Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart, but not really. Because <laughs> I don't want to quit my life. Because I don't want to change. Yeah. 
exactly. I don't want to stop doing this. Simple now that's kind of a scenario of it, if you will. And what kind of what kind of deal is that? You know, you think God's going to honor that? You know, He might strike you dead. Remember what He did to Ananias and Sapphira whenever they lied. Okay, they died in their tracks. All right, so it's not a good idea to lie to God. All right, so where are we at? Did we finish? No. I want to go through 25. Okay. So, Are you ready? Yeah, what am I on? <laughs> am, am I on 24? 24, 24, 24, 24, I think. Okay. Then Simon answered and said, Oh, yeah. Pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Okay. okay. So Peter and John, they went back and they kept evangelizing, kind of following up with Philip there. Yeah. Now here's one thing that I want to bring up to you. It doesn't say it. It doesn't say it. But in my studying in uh, the smart people who are far smarter than me, say that this is true and this is what I felt right in the beginning. If Simon had truly repented and been saved, it would have said he was saved. Yeah. Okay? But it doesn't. So most likely, because they've already admonished him, admonished him about, you know, it being all about him, about money and all that kind of stuff. So we're kind of rest assured that he never was truly saved. Even though he said he wanted to be, he said. Now, what that brings up is just because you say you want it and just because you go through the motions don't mean you're saved. Okay? And that's, again, that's why, as from my perspective of it, that's why I have to try to stress to people the importance of truly meaning what they're saying. Because if you don't say it, I mean, if you don't truly mean it, please don't say it for the reasons we just talked about. You know, you're lying to God's face. So, I would assume, and I think, and according to what I've studied and all that, this guy's rotting in hell as we speak. Yeah, because they didn't talk any more about him. No, that that no, was pretty much it. Not at all. Not at all. And the, the disciples who, I mean, the apostles who are led by John and Peter, who are led by God, the Holy Spirit, okay, they convicted him and condemned him, okay, even though God's the, the one that judges, but they basically condemned him for his attitude or for his desires of wanting to buy the gospel, if you will, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I feel rest assured that this dude just did not make it. And the point of that is, is that just because you say it, just because you go through the motions, just because you think you want to be want to be a, a believer, doesn't mean you are a believer. You have to truly mean it in your heart. Now, does that mean you're going to do everything perfect? No, none of us ever will. We never will. But we've got to strive to be obedient because that's where it all comes from. Obedience to the Word. Obedience to God. Obedience to Christ. Okay? Obedience to the Holy Spirit. It's obedience. Do we all fail? Yeah. Yep. In some way or another. Every day. Every day. Every day. I don't know. You know, he's probably very bitter because before Philip and Simon and then came to his city, he was the man. He was the man. And then after they left, he was probably not looked upon the same way anymore. Certainly. He was probably lost his notoriety. Certainly. Uh, he lost his so-called powers and trickery. So he had to become a bitter man and who knows what happened to him. He was not the same guy and no one looked at him the same. Anymore. Exactly. And I feel rest assured, like I said, that he uh, he was never saved and he most likely is he is in hell as we speak. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's finish there. This was a good Bible study tonight. I know we didn't get as far as you wanted, but I thought it was really good. So keep your place in Isaiah 53. We'll do it next Oh, yeah, yeah. Week. Keep, those of you who are Small, watching, yeah. next week we'll get to we'll get to Isaiah 53 because it's, yeah, right off the bat. Yeah. Well, not right off the bat. But <laughs> but you haven't really a, few min, a few minutes in, we'll, we'll get to Isaiah 53. Well, God bless you all. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, I hope you got something out of it as well. 
Uh, it would be a lot better if you could come and join us. Um, Lori, you guys be careful. Take care of your horses. Uh, Chris and Lori, get well. On and on and on and on. God bless you all. See you next week. Oh, we're going to pray. Oh, we do, don't we? Yeah. Kenneth is falling down on the job. Uh -oh. <laughs> Brother Kenneth, praise yeah. out, will you? And the books. Yeah. Father yeah. God, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. And yes, Lord. Sacrifice your son gave for our salvation. Um, we thank you for this Bible study and all you teach us. We know you're in control and you have a plan. Please teach us more to be obedient. We uh, lift our prayer book up to you and all the needs there, and we pray for our country and Israel and all the Middle East. And as always, God and protect our first responders, police, military, and our political leaders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all again. <laughs> well, just two blessings, right? Yeah. See you next week. Mm -hmm.